Combat is an incredibly important element of pretty much every video game, be it direct or indirect. From stomping on Goombas to shooting at Nazis, it's a concept we're all familiar with, and there's probably a million different ways to fight. But when it comes to types of combat systems, there's only really two. Real-time and turn-based. In real-time combat, the player and the enemies are doing everything simultaneously. Every attack, spell, jump, movement, they all happen live and all at the same time, right in front of you. Turn-based combat is the exact opposite. Combat takes place in turns where the player and their opponents perform specific actions only on their respective turns. There are tons of variations of these two models, like the turns being time-based or being able to act outside of your turn, but there's one variation in particular that is very fascinating, the active pause system. The active pause system, sometimes called pausable real-time, allows players to, well, pause the game and create a specific set of actions that'll be performed once the game is unpaused. It's a fairly old system that was popularized by the original Baldur's Gate, but can be traced back to games like Knights of Zentar and Secret of Mana, and it's still used even today. The reason this system has stayed so popular for so long is because it helps to bridge the gap between people who enjoy real-time games and turn-based games. If you're into the faster pace of real-time combat, you can avoid the pause system, but if you're interested in a more methodical approach, the tactical side of things is there for you. It's also just a great system to implement in some games, since it allows for combat to get really hectic, while still giving the player a chance to plan out their next move without feeling too overwhelmed. One game in particular that uses this system almost perfectly is Transistor by Supergiant Games. Transistor is a beautiful game with a rich narrative, stunning visuals, and a fantastic soundtrack, but its gameplay is where it truly shines. The combat hinges on this mechanic called Turn, which is this game's version of the active pause system. How it works in Transistor is that the player activates the turn function and the game freezes, but the player doesn't allowing them to move around and assign a chain of commands using their abilities. This chain of commands is limited by a bar at the top of the screen. The more powerful the ability, or the more the player moves around, the faster the bar fills up. Once the player completely fills the bar, they can't add any more abilities to the sequence unless they remove some in reverse sequential order. When the player deactivates turn mode, they flourish around the screen using that specific order of commands they've assigned in rapid succession. And to balance the system, there's a short cooldown after using it to ensure that it's not abused. The reason this system is so well implemented is because it isn't just a pause. It changes the fundamentals of the combat. You don't have to use the turn function. Fighting in real time is viable. It's fast paced and fun and surprisingly challenging. When you do use the turn function though, it becomes a completely different game. One more focused on strategizing than on being quick witted. The active pause in Transistor turns the combat into a sort of puzzle game, but one that's so much more interesting than it seems on the surface. See, once you activate turn mode, everything stops, and your goal becomes finding the most optimal way to deal with the different enemies in the area. Some create shields and some heal enemies, so it's important to prioritize those ones, and then dispatch the other targets while staying within your ability limit. It's an enjoyable balancing act of deciding what you need to get rid of and what you can get rid of given that limit. Once you're done and your sequence of attacks goes through, you have to wait for the cooldown before you can enter turn mode again. And this is where it gets really interesting. Since the game is still in real time, during that cooldown period, the positions of certain enemies in the area will change. They can walk around, and this movement changes the little puzzle that you had the last time you used turn mode. This is why it's so interesting, because the player always has a different situation every time they activate turn mode. You could be just short of killing all required enemies, and by the next time you activate turn mode, some of them can respawn, change positions, heal, and suddenly have shields. It's a fun and frustrating situation. These ever-changing combat puzzles keep the active pause system created through the turn mechanic from bogging down the game. In most games that utilize that type of system, it merely allows the player to stop for a second and then target their opponents, set up some commands once they figured it out, and return back to regular play as if nothing happened. It does nothing to change the combat, it just halts the flow for a second while you figure it out. While there's nothing wrong with that, it's nice to see something like Transistor, where the pause turns the game into an engaging, tactical version of its original combat, rather than a freeze frame version of what it normally is. Even the designers noticed how interesting the puzzle-like element of this mechanic is. That's why they created an entire section dedicated to challenges relating to this puzzle combat system. In some of these, you have to defeat all of the enemies in a certain amount of time, and even wave survivals. And since every activation of turn mode results in a different combat puzzle, each of these challenges has smaller challenges built inside of them. The system is the main focus of Transistor's gameplay, and with all of the subtle nuance and available challenges, it's clear the developers intended it to be that way, and it's good that they did. It's one of the most enjoyable implementations of an active pause system that I can think of, and Transistor really helps highlight the usefulness of this sort of system. While it can be used to make a game easier and more accessible, 
it's just as capable at being used to accentuate gameplay and create a more varied experience for the player. The active pause system is a veteran element of game design, and if we keep seeing games like Transistor that use the system to its full potential, it won't be going anywhere anytime soon. Hey, let's just go.